And he's so mental that I've never spoke to that girl about, I'm shy, I'm nervous, and, and to be honest, I feel like I've, I've let out all my emotions and said my thing, and I think that's really selfish of me, because I've let out my opinion, but I'd love to know hers. John. Hello. So we are here in your home studio. Very nice it is too. Thank you. And um, today I want to talk to you about Love Me Again and also touch on your new music that you're coming <laughs> to. But let's rewind and uh, think about the moment when you wrote that song. Can you tell me what was going on, where you were? Uh, I was in actually a very, <laughs> I had a, um, it was called The White House. It's so mental. It's, it, was like, it was like a tiny little cardboard box house that had been placed on a street in the middle of nowhere. It was such a bizarre little house. I'd come off the back of the rude mental stuff and it was time to write my own first solo single. I just made this house chord progression thinking, oh, this could be something cool as a house track. And then I came across this hook and I had, there was some different lyrics on it. It was like, I need to know now, need to know now. I wish you'd love me again. It's something weird and it just didn't sit right. So I went in and I was, I was collaborating with a guy at the time called Steve Booker and I took him that and I didn't realise how big this thing was and he was like, do you know how big that chorus is? And I was like, uh, kind of. And then, and then we were like crafting it and then we simplified it even more and it, it started sinking in and throughout the day it like started nurturing and started building and I started going, oh wow, this is, this is something special. And it, it was, it was something that naturally, naturally happened. It was about, the, lyrically, it was about my relationship of the time. And it just gelled so quickly and so easily. It must be quite strange to have such an enormous hit coming from a moment of what sounds like quite visceral pain. What was it like for you to delve in, you know, as you say, in that relationship? What was that like? It's so mental. I, I've actually wrote a new tune from a new album talking about it. And the thing that inspired me was, I guess it was Adele or Hello, because that concept that you haven't spoke about a subject that needs to be spoken about, and in that relationship, I've never spoke about it. Really? And the funny thing is, my missus now turned around and said, well, have you called her? Because you've said that in your new song, and I went, Oh, no, 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 no. I thought I'd just put it in the music and apologise because it's such a weird, bizarre thing that this album, this relationship, it was like fate. It was meant to happen, the twists and turns and how it was. And maybe now I look back, maybe my mind was kind of diverting it in its different ways, both positive and negative, to create a record. And it's so mental that I've never spoke to that girl about... I'm shy, I'm nervous, and, and to be honest, I feel like I've... I've let out all my emotions and said my thing, and I think that's really selfish of me, because I've let out my opinion, but I'd love to know hers. Mm, yeah. But it's just crazy what that relationship has like put on my whole career and, and how that has developed, and, and that we've never spoken about that. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of a thing that was just like, okay, and, yeah. and you know. But it's, it's a crazy thing that the journey it took on from, from where it started. It's unforgivable, a stolen branch or soul. Is that why demons do? They rule the world to me, destroy everything. They bring down angels like you. It really did take on a life of its own, that song. With, you know, how many num weeks at number one was it? It's countless. I don't know, I see, it didn't, it knocked blurred lines off, I remember that. that <laughs> Which was is quite kind of, a triumph in itself. That was mental, everyone thought it wasn't going to happen. And then little old me knocked it off and I was like, what has happened? And literally, I've got this uh, email account set up, so it's called a thing called Whale Report. And it sends you your peaks around the world when you peak yourself on a chart. I just remember that, just going one, 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 one. And I was just like, this is so ridiculous. I took it for granted the whole period. Like, broke so many records, it was crazy. At the time, I was like, yeah, this is cool. A bit of a whirlwind. And now I'm like, wow, that was, that was mind-blowing. And, and such an experience, you know. Were you ever worried of 
being accused of being a one-hit wonder, or people just oh, don't yeah. know that. Oh, yeah, still get that now. Really? I hate the idea of that. But I have, I've got this in my studio. And I keep it there at all times. And he says, a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. And I keep it there. I saw it in a shop in Shoreditch when I was out in the market. And I was like, wow, that meant so much because, you know, I've been through the rough seas, I've been through the choppy seas, and what that's created is, is I'm st I feel like I'm still in it now compared to what was a smooth sea would love me again, feel the love and blame. But what he's creating now is that I can handle situations differently and I can create music in a different way.